It's always like emasculating shaking hands with Jeff. He has like the same size hands as like Andre the fucking giant. <laughs> Just so you guys know, the other three black people in the crowd are blood relatives, so put your phones away, please. No three down in 911. Um, uh, it's kind of funny. I went through puberty at a pretty late age, so like my voice was still cracking, like in college, which didn't mean I wasn't getting like ass. But when I would talk to these girls who were, who were in bed, they would you know talk to me and they're like, "Oh, well, talk to me dirty," and I'd be like, "Okay," as confidently as I, I could, I'd be like, "I want to be in you." As I've uh, gotten older, it's uh, settled into the silkiness that you hear before you. <laughs> and um, and I, I work at a bar in Lincoln Park. I talk to a lot of white girls. And so a lot of white women, they haven't been with that many black guys. You see, they keep alluding to the size of my penis. Like every time I talk, they're just talking about how big my dick is. And I'm like, does this girl think I'm going to bring the ruckus in the bedroom? Like I'm going to tear her pussy up? Like, like, if my dick was a cat, it would be like, <laughs> Give me your pussy, ho. In reality, it's more like, Meow. <laughs> Hello. My name's Peter. How are you? Permission to enter? <laughs> no? Alright, I'll just show it back into myself. <laughs> Um, who here is uh, unemployed or underemployed? Yeah. All the bartenders are like, fuck. Why the fuck did I pick up this shit? Broke motherfuckers. I'm un underemployed at the moment. Um, there was a time where I did have a nine to five though. And uh, it's kind of interesting. I can, I know the exact moment that it all went to shit for me. Like where I was like, that's the day I got laid off. Like that's the day I fucked myself up. It was a Wednesday, and um, I woke up, I felt great. So I, in my head, it was like, why the fuck would I go to work? So I call off work, first thing I do, I smoke a blunt, smoke some weed. Next thing I do, yeah, give it up for smoke, doing drugs, right? All right, so I smoke some weed, I go straight to the gym, and I play basketball for a couple hours. After that, I have some Harold's chicken, didn't feel good about it. After that, I smoke some weed, and then I ate some more chicken. As I'm housing this chicken while I smoke this herb, I think to myself, I was like, weed, basketball, chicken, weed, chicken. So this is the blackest day ever. I didn't know if I should like give a motherfucker some dap or if I should go on the computer and go on Martin Luther King Jr.'s Wikipedia page. I was having like a lot of turmoil inside. It was like, I did not feel that great. And I don't like, I'm not downplaying like, you know, smoking weed first in the morning. Actually, waking and baking is one of the best ideas you could ever have. For the people that haven't waked and baked though, or woke and baked, I'm a writer, I should probably say that correctly. Right? Um, that doesn't rhyme, you don't have to say it that way. <laughs> okay, fine. Waked and baked, I'm sorry, thanks a lot, Kate. You're um, you have to, you know, get ready to do absolutely jack shit that day. Like, if you have plans, like, put them to the side, get intimate with the couch. You're gonna be there for a while. By the 13th episode of Family Matters, <laughs> you're gonna realize, like, it's gonna dawn on you, like, holy shit, Carl Winslow was in Die Hard. <laughs> light bulb goes off and you're like, I just smoked weed and missed a full day of work, oh my god. And then you're also high, so you're actually trying to like switch the light bulb off because you actually see it. And then you look back on TV and I look back and I see Carl Winslow and then I see myself as Carl Winslow. So I see like my receding hairline, a thick ass mustache and a plaid shirt that's like holding on for dear life. I'm saying shit like, Harriet! <laughs> And then you think to yourself, holy shit, it's going, it's gonna be a bad life for me. You know, like, you're gonna live in like a mediocre sized house, you're gonna live in a bad neighborhood, and a good neighborhood, safe neighborhood, at the same time, gangsters are gonna wear tie-dye bandanas for some fucking reason. <laughs> and then the kid, across, the nerdy kid across the street's gonna try to fuck your daughter every Friday night, 8 p.m., 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. <laughs> 
And that's when you're like, oh my God, you let sober up very, very quickly. All right, guys, thank you very much. Woo!